But first, if you've ever ridden your bike over a really hard curb, then you might like to know that it's a combination of rubber, nylon and bulletproof Kevlar that's protecting your sensitive side. So how are tyres put together? Invented in 1888 by John Dunlop, the tyre is made up of several important parts. The inner carcass gives the tyre structure. Threads at the edges, known as beads, help keep it on the rim, and the tread provides the grip. Until World War II, bicycle tyres were organic. The rubber they were made out of came from trees, but poor supply forced inventors to come up with an alternative. By 1960, synthetic rubber became the standard, and modern bicycle tyres have been made from it ever since. Making tyre rubber is like making a cake. There's a recipe you have to follow to get the mix spot on. The right amount of the artificial rubber is weighed out and sent through heavy-duty rollers to be mixed with the other ingredients. You can see what happens in this handy demonstration. Tyres are usually black, but that's not so you don't have to wash them. Black soot is added to the white rubber, which improves the grip. This is pretty important if you want to keep your bike upright. It has to be mixed up really well, so the rubber will be passed through the rollers a few times. Once it's ready, the tyre chef can add all the other ingredients. Things like mineral oil, silica, zinc oxide and sulphur are thrown into the mix. It sounds quite technical, but basically they improve the tyre's elasticity, density and durability. This whole process is exactly the same on the larger rollers just on a far bigger scale. When the mix is complete, fresh tyre rubber emerges, ready for the next stage. So, you've got your rubber, but there's far more to tyres than that. To create the carcass, nylon matting is added to make it stronger. Enormous rolls of nylon are threaded up onto these machines to be combined with the rubber mixture. It needs to be spread out like pastry, so the workers feed it back onto the rollers. This will create a big sheet of rubber and the nylon can then be added in. This rubber nylon sandwich is what makes up the basic material for the tyre's carcass. When you're building a tyre, you always start with the carcass. This foundation is expertly wound round a tyre-sized barrel and glued into place. Now, remember the Kevlar? Well, that's this bit. These threads are made from the same bulletproof material used to protect bodyguards and the police. It's very strong but light, and it holds the tyre on the rim. It's wound round the carcass, and once it's in place, the barrel is expanded, which actually forces the Kevlar into the rubber. The sides of the carcass are then folded over, and the threads now make it completely bulletproof. Assuming you get shot just on the very edge of your tyre. And that's the tyre's structure. But to be honest, if you tried to ride a bike on a tyre like this, it wouldn't be very comfortable or give you much grip. The grip comes from the tread. It's made from the combination of two layers of hard-wearing rubber. An expert continually measures the width of the two layers, otherwise the composition wouldn't be right and your tyre wouldn't grip. The raw tread is sent off to be added to the tyre carcass. A layer is wrapped around the drum and firmly stuck down. But it's still not ready to be put on the rim just yet. First, it needs to be cooked. This cooking process is known as vulcanization. The combined elements are loaded into a machine that heats them up to 180 degrees Celsius for three minutes. This melts everything together and at the same time it expands the rubber into the treaded grooves. When the timer goes ping, the machine opens up and the finished tyre is removed. Next, the workers will take a random selection of tyres from each batch and run some rigorous tests. Hitting a kerb with a weak tyre could hurt you and even damage your wheel. So the tyres spend three days on this machine. It's like hitting 50,000 kerbs in a row. And how annoying can a puncture be? So all the tyres have to pass the puncture simulation test. And what if you put too much air into the tyre? They all have to survive at least 8 pounds per square inch of pressure. 
This one manages almost 20. So next time you hit a curb, just remember your bulletproof tyre is taking the strain, so you don't have to.